Pictures can say a thousand words. It was known to the ancient Homo sapiens and even to the professional of today's media. It is hence not very rare to just find a boy or a girl roaming around with a DSLR inside woods, sea beach, in a wedding, events, hill stations, press conferences, hospitals and almost every place on earth. Photographers are busy finding the right angle and featuring a unique perspective in the world of visuals. However, to get into the world of professional photography, you need to beg, borrow or eventually buy a DSLR camera. But after that, almost everyone asks that one basic question. Why lens and what lens? With so many brands coming up with such wide varieties of lenses, it is no surprise for a person to get confused about which lens to use. So let me help you choose the best lens. In this module, we will study first what is lens, then technicalities related to lens. In the next part, we will look at all the basic types of lenses and their purposes, while in the later part, we will discuss about how to keep your camera lens safe. Let us understand the basics first. What is a lens? Don't worry, not getting into the jargons of technicalities, a lens can be described as any piece of glass curved on one or both sides used in an optical device like a contact lens or a camera lens to change the convergence of light rays for magnification or to correct the defects in vision. So, there are basically two types of lenses. A convex, a converging lens that converges light rays and is generally thicker in the middle. The other type of lens is a concave or diverging lens that diverges light rays and is thinner in the middle. When light rays fall on a concave lens, they converges to a single point which is called as focal point. So, when light from all points of an image passes through a convex lens, it forms an inverted image of it on the other side. However, a single lens cannot produce a sharp image of any object. A combination of multiple convex and concave lenses is required. If you open a DSLR lens, you will find multiple lenses which works together to produce a sharp image. It is not really that complicated, right? So this was a very simple explanation to the physics of how a lens works. But before jumping to what are the various kinds of lenses and what their uses are, we should probably clear out our understanding about photography and lens. Guys, I think we are a little out of focus. You got it, right? I think you didn't get it. So let's focus on what is focus. So focus is basically about the sharpness of a subject in a photograph. When an image is sharply defined, then it is said to be in focus. If it is not, then it is out of focus. A photographer may use the inbuilt autofocus system available in many lenses or manually focus using the focus ring. Now, let me explain you what is a focal length. The focal length of the lens in simple language can be defined as the distance from a lens to the subject in sharp focus. You might have heard of a 50mm, 35mm, 100mm lenses. It is the focal length which is a numerical value in millimeters that is used to describe a lens. But another aspect changes with the focal length and that is the field of view. Now, what is a field of view? It is the measurement of the amount of scene that can be recorded in any given lens. It is usually provided as the diagonal measurement across the image area. When measured in terms of degrees, it is known as the angle of view. When measured in terms of the units of distance, we call it the field of view. When choosing lenses for different kinds of photography, always remember that the smaller is the focal length, the wider is the field of view and vice versa. So this was all about focus and its relation to lens. Now another factor you must understand in photography is the lens aperture. The lens aperture is the adjustable opening through which light passes to enter into the camera. Functioning like the iris of any human eyes, a lens aperture is denoted by f-stop number. So when buying a lens, remember that the lesser is the lens aperture, the sharp focused image it can produce. Photographers love to manipulate and play with this tool. One of the major reasons is that it directly controls the depth of field in a photograph. Now, you would ask me, what is depth of field? It is all about playing with the area with proper sharpness within a photograph that will appear in focus. In every picture, there is a certain area of your image in front of and behind the subject that will appear in sharpness. Or in other words, they are in focus. 
photographs that have a very small range of focus is known to have shallow depth of field. Photographs that have a very large range of focus is called to have deep depth of field. When clicking pictures, there are three main factors that will affect how you control the depth of your image. They are aperture, physical distance of subject and focal length of the lens on your camera. First, let's see how the aperture is affecting it. Remember, large aperture means small f-stop, which means shallow depth of field. The same is the other way around. Small aperture, which means larger f-number, which allows deeper or large depth of field. For example, if we shoot with a 50mm lens and click a picture with f1.8, the picture will turn out something like this with a sharp subject. Whereas, if we click a picture of the same subject with the same background with f7.1, the picture will look like this. Next factor that affect is the distance of camera from the subject. It's very important how far or close you are from your subject to determine the depth of field you can achieve in your picture. The closer your subject is to the camera, the shallower your depth of field becomes. Therefore, moving further away from your subject will deepen your depth of field. Here, we are talking about practically going nearer or closer from the subject. For example, if we shoot the subject from a closer distance, the picture will turn out something like this. Whereas, if we move the subject further away from the camera with the same settings, then we will get an image something like this. And finally, it is the focal length. The longer is your focal length, the shallower is the depth of field and vice versa. Here, you change the focal length in your lens by zooming in or changing the lens. For example, if we click a picture with 18mm, the picture looks very wide and we cannot have a smaller area in sharp focus. However, if we click the picture with zooming in the lens and click it with 120mm, we can have a sharp focus on what we desire, making the picture look like this. It is the proper mix and match of all these three factors, your physical distance from the subject, the aperture and your focal length of lens which allows you to create depth of field in photograph as you want it. All of these might seem a lot to keep in mind, but trust me, just a basic understanding of all these features and a lot of trial and error is how anyone and everyone learns photography. The best tip in photography could be just keep on clicking photographs and within no time you will master these technicalities. However, if you have missed anything we have covered, just scan this QR code and you will get everything and even more about the topics we have covered so far. Now a quick question, which kind of photography generally uses shallow depth of field and which one generally prefers to have deep depth of field? It's easy, a portrait picture will need a sharp focus on the details of a face so we generally prefer in shallow depth of field. While any landscape photograph uses a deep depth of field with almost all the elements of pictures in focus. Probably most of you are correct. If you are still confused, re-watch the video or refer the notes to the QR code. Next, we are going to look at the different kinds of lenses and what they are used for. If you are confused what lens to use for what kind of photography, surely check out the next two parts of the video. Hi learners, welcome back to Excel. If we just need one lens for one DSLR, why are there so many kinds of lenses? See, both of them just look the same. Yet, this is a zoom lens and this is a prime lens. There are hundreds and varieties of lenses with different features, price ranges and purposes. Let me broadly take you through the different kinds of lenses. So, based on whether we can zoom or not, we have two lenses, the zoom lens and the prime lens. And the only difference between the two is that focal length cannot be changed in a prime lens. First up, we have the zoom lens. This type of lens has a mechanical assembly such that we can change the focal length and therefore can also change the field of view. All zoom lenses will have a zoom ring that help us zoom in and are described as XMM and YMM lens. For example, any 70-300mm zoom lens means it has 70mm as its minimum focal length and 300mm as its maximum focal length. The advantage of zoom lens is that without any physical movement, we can zoom in or zoom out and adjust our composition. 
Moving on, next up is prime lens. So, a prime lens is one that has just one focal length, only in contrast to a zoom lens. Prime lenses come in a wide range of focal lengths. Even a normal lens, telephoto, wide angle, macro lens can also be prime lenses. Now, what are these? Let us know about them in details. A normal lens is a lens with a focal length approximately equal to the diagonal of the digital camera's image sensor. Any scene viewed through a normal lens appears to have the same perspective as the way we see it with our own eyes. Any 35mm or 50mm lens can be considered as normal lens. These are extremely popular with street photographers. The perspective capture with a normal lens will be extremely true to life, as if we place the viewer in the scene as a witness. Now, let us move on to wide angle lens. Wide angle lens, as the name suggests, have a wide field of view or angular view. Any zoom or prime lens with a focal length approximately less than 35mm can be considered as a wide angle. Now, what are they used for? The most obvious effect of a wide angle lens is their massive field of view. You can just capture a huge amount of a scene in a single image. That's the main reason they are popular with landscape photographers. Wide angle lenses have a dramatic effect on perspective too. Objects close to the camera will appear much larger than objects farther away. It's entirely different look to what we see with our eyes. The short focal length means that you can have everything from a few feet in front of the camera to the mountains in the distance in sharp focus. Now, additionally, there is an extremely wide angle lens called as a fish eye lens, also known as ultra wide or super wide lens. It is a type of wide angle lens which can capture a wide image typically around 180 degrees. The image they produce are highly distorted, giving them a dynamic and abstract feel. Next we have the telephoto lens. Telephoto lenses come in a variety of focal lengths from short telephoto which is about 85 to 135 mm, medium telephoto which are generally 70 to 200 mm and super telephoto which are longer than 300 mm focal length. Remember. A telephoto lens can be either zoom or prime lens. Now, let's talk about the purpose of telephoto lens. The most obvious reason to use a telephoto lens and why most beginners consider getting one is that it allows clicking distant subjects easily. A telephoto lens will allow you to take photos of subjects that are far away. This comes in handy when you are taking photos of things that you can't get nearer. Which is why it is also known as tele lens or long lens. A short telephoto lens is ideal for shooting portraits and candid shots. For example, at events, where you are quite close to the subjects but don't want to intrude too much. They are compact and lightweight and can be handheld for fast shooting. The medium lenses are popular with sports and action photographers who can get quite close to the action. For example, standing on the sidelines of a cricket or football field. Most amateur photographers will not need a super telephoto lens but because of the long focal length, they are a popular choice among professional wildlife and nature photographers, as well as sports photographers who can't get very close to the action. Next, we are going to talk about macro lens. A macro lens is one which allows you to take sharp, detailed close-up photos of small subjects such as flowers, plants, insects and products. They can focus much nearer than normal lens. This allows you to fill the frame with your subject and capture more detail. So, this was all about a normal, wide-angle, telephoto and macro lens. Remember, all of these three types of lenses can be zoom lens or a prime lens. Now, let us have a look at some photographs and you have to figure out what kinds of lenses have been used for clicking them. Now that you know the different kinds of lenses, you wouldn't want to go damaging your expensive possessions. So, in the next segment, I will teach you how to take good care of your lenses. If you manhandle things easily or you are too possessive about your newly bought lens, be sure to check the next segment. Hello and welcome back to Excel. Everyone should be cared. Essentially, when it is something that helps you capture moments and condense visual tales permanently. In this last segment of our module, we will learn about how to take good care of your lenses. Buying a lens is a significant investment. 
not just financially but it is also about the image quality of your photographs so we are here to help you in protecting your passionate investment by guiding you on handling and treating your lenses with compassion and care let us begin with the very initial yet crucial step of attaching a lens and a dslr also called as mounting of the lens in order to alter the focal length and lens type dslr users are regularly required to change lenses doing so is simple and straightforward however it is worth remembering that the contacts on the lens and bayonet mount or in simple words the interlocking system of the camera body and lens are delicate components their exact alignment is important to ensure that they are not damaged let us look at the perfect way to do it whenever you attach a lens check that the camera is switched off first and keep the mounting mark on the lens aligned with the mounting mark on the camera body position the lens on the camera's bayonet mount and rotate until it clicks securely into place whether you need to rotate the lens clockwise or anti clockwise to attach depends on the kind of camera you use hence the most important guide to ensure you do it correctly is to follow your user manual moving on now let me show you some easy and helpful tips about how to clean a camera lens Before you wipe the front of your lens, remove any dust or grit that may cause scratch. It is better to buy a quality microfiber lens cloth and keep it clean. Never ever use your t-shirt to wipe your lenses. Next, when you take a lens off your camera, always try to replace the front and rear lens cap immediately. This prevents extra dust from getting into the lens and camera body. Finally, do smoothly clean up the outer lens body. Dust can accumulate on anything if not used for some time or if it is taken to a dusty place. So, these could be some basic habits you can adopt to keep your lenses clean when you are using it. But when you are not using them, it is important to store them safely as well. If the lenses were supplied together with a protective carry case, this will act as one of the safest places to store your lenses. Always have a packet of silica gel with your lenses to keep moisture away from it. You can alternatively store them in airtight plastic containers protected in a lens pouch or sleeve. Always remember to keep the lens in a dry and a cool environment. Humidity can prove damaging enhancing the risk of fungus and mold. Lastly, keep all the camera equipments stored above the ground level. So this was all about how to take good care of your camera lens. I hope whatever has been discussed so far made sense to you. This was almost everything anyone should know to deal with DSLR lenses. But if you have failed to get hold of anything we have discussed so far, here's a quick revision. In first part, we began with what is a lens. A lens is a piece of transparent material that is used to convert or divert light rays. There are two types of lenses: convex lens that converts light and concave lens that diverges light. The sharpness of a detailed area of a subject in any photograph is said to be in focus while those appear not in a very clear and detailed manner are said to be out of focus. The focal length of a DSLR lens is the distance between the lens and the subject on which it can have sharp focus. Focal length affects the field of view which can be described as the amount of width of view that can be captured in a single picture. The larger is the focal length the smaller is the field of view and vice versa. Lens aperture is the opening inside a lens through which light enters into it. Depth of field can be referred as the amount or range of area in sharp focus. Shallow depth of field means a very small amount of area is in sharp focus, while deep depth of field means there is a greater depth in the picture and a large range of objects are in focus. The depth of field in any picture can be controlled by three main factors: aperture The larger is the aperture opening, the shallower depth of field can be achieved and vice versa. The closer your subject is to the camera, the shallower your depth of field becomes and vice versa. Similarly, the longer is your focal length, the shallower is the depth of field and vice versa. A proper control and combination of all these three factors helps you manipulate depth of field in your photograph as you want it. There are some other types of lenses depending on their focal length and field of view differences. A normal lens is having a focal length 35 to 50 mm and gives a field of view very similar to our human eye. The wide angle lenses have a wider or large field of view than a normal lens. Generally, any lens with focal length less than 35 mm. 
they can achieve a deep depth of field and hence are often used in landscape photography. Fish eye lens is a special type of an extremely wide angle lens which can capture a view of about 180 degrees. A telephoto lens that has a larger focal length than any normal lens and field of view much lesser than a normal eye. They are often used to shoot distant subjects without getting nearer to them. Short and medium telephotos can be used to achieve shallow depth of field and hence often can be used for portrait photography. However, telephoto lenses are mostly used in wildlife and sports photography. A macro lens is one which allows you to take sharp, detailed, extreme close-up photos of small subjects. They can focus much nearer than normal lenses allowing you to capture details. Remember, a normal lens, wide-angle lens, telephoto lens or macro lens can be a prime or zoom lens. In the part 3 of our module, we learned how to take care of our lenses. During mounting a lens on a camera, always switch off the camera first. Align the white marks on a lens and camera and rotate till both of them interlock with one another. This is the general procedure, but still, do not hesitate to refer to the user manuals before doing it for the first time. While cleaning the front glass part of a lens, do not use anything already with dirt. Rather, have a microfiber lens cloth to clean it up. Always attach the front and rear cap on a DSLR body and on the lens after changing it. While storing a DSLR camera and lens, always try to keep it away from a humid and moisture environment. Photography is indeed a passion pursued by many yet mastered by those who work hard and understand the art embedded within it. No one becomes a professional photographer just by learning technicalities in theory. One has to hone their skills by practicing as much as possible. So get up, take your camera and start clicking photos. I'm gonna do the same. Bye.